Lottie Dottie, we likes to potty. We don't cause trouble. We don't bother nobody. Welcome to the Two Guys One Podcast. It's our comedy podcast. It's about boring old white men. Look, you can justify all you want to. It doesn't make it less dumb. Welcome to the Two Guys One Podcast. The Sodom and Gomorrah yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Whose story are you telling here? I'm one guy. I like it already. <laughs> and I'm the other. I was thinking about that dude the other day. Welcome to the Two Guys One Podcast. Oh yeah, there's a lot of editing you gotta do. Two Guys One Podcast. Throw you a little free funny. Welcome to the Two Guys One Podcast. I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Welcome to Two Guys One Podcast. And this is the podcast. Gotta get all slathered up. <laughs> we, I, you know, <laughs> I've, I've been thinking about it. It's been a while since we've mentioned the fact that you germ X every time when you come yeah. on the show, but you do do it every time. And so occasionally you can hear the yeah. sh- 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 on the mic a little bit. I have thought a couple of times while I was editing the show, like, I wonder if somebody is a new listener, like, do they think that we're like oiling up as we get ready to podcast? Full contact podcasting. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good impersonation. Is that now? Wait a minute. Was that your one guy impersonation, or was that your Bob Ball impersonation? No, that's definitely not fucking Bob Ball. Bob Ball can suck my nuts. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> we're doing. Uh, we're doing our show, not uh, Pod on Pod yet. That's okay. It's even. A better place for me to say my uh, discontent for Bob Ball. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. All right. I'm pulling up my newts. My newts. I got newts. He could sh- he could literally save a child from Africa every day, and I wouldn't give a fuck. He could be that guy that cures cancer? Wouldn't care. <laughs> like, fuck you, Adolf. Yeah, he's <laughs> annoying. Um, all right, are you ready? I was born ready. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. And you're not even going to do a mic check. I d- I'm, I've been doing We were doing it. You don't even have your ears on. I don't. Well, I don't have my ears on. But I see that I, I, it's like uh, I'm like the guy at the, in the Matrix. I'm sitting. I'm watching the ones and zeros. I don't even see the ones and zeros anymore. I just see redhead, blonde, good mic, bad mic. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm looking I'm, I'm watching The Matrix <laughs> No really I got a DVD copy of The Matrix Running over here on the computer screen I'm watching that instead of No not really How are you sir? Pretty good man I've got two days off in a row It is late tonight to be recording And I don't even care Because I can sleep in Yeah. Now see there I feel um, I'm very jealous of you uh, Honey Bun and I have been talking a lot lately About the lack of sleep. The girls are going through a real needy period for whatever reason. We're really having a problem like getting t- them to soothe themselves at night, uh, which, I mean, that's a problem for me too, but <laughs> we, I, can't, I can't give them an Ambien like I can myself. You know? Benadryl works every time. <laughs> amen, amen. Um, anyway, uh, and, but then even once they get to sleep, like, they can't they can't resoothe themselves either. If they wake up for any reason, it's like yelling, screaming, and then they're both awake, and then we're all awake, and then, you know, Deuce pees his pants or something in the middle of the night, and and then we're all up at six a.m. and it's it's there's not enough sleep. Everybody's tired. Everybody's tired. Other guy. That's what I'm trying to get across. That's how we are. Well, that's your bed. Lay in it. <laughs> If only, if only I could lay in it, but I can't get a mic there. Or it would be weird if you were in the room with me while I was laying down, at least, I think. Uh, you want to go to the rundown? It's the best place to start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've got a word of the day. 1920s word of the day. This is a good one, too. Um, we're going to talk about the Beatles' revenge. The 
Okay. The Beatles' revenge. Is it the is it the opposite of Montezuma's revenge? Like you just don't shit for a week? No, it's not that at all. Uh, and I guess this is a nature heavy show. We're also going to talk about the Battle of the Bears. Polar bears? Mm, maybe. All right. And then after we talk about the Beatles and the Bears, we're going to talk about the birds and the bees. We're going to we're going to talk about thirty one adorable slang terms for sex over the past six hundred years. Uh, I like that you got a quadruple. Constant alliteration. Uh, the birds and the bees and the, the battle the bears and the and the beetles. Yeah. yeah, this is the all bee show. It's the quad it's the quad bees. To be or for to be. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then we'll wrap things up with the best bee, Bob, a word from Bob Ross. All right. That's right. All right, so let's uh, get things right we off the bat here. We should do an alphabet soup show. And each week we talk about a topic from one letter of the alphabet, starting from A and going to Z. Uh, this week's episode of Two Guys, One Podcast is brought to you by the letter B and the number four. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's this week anyway. All right. Well, all right. We'll try that from now on. You I, should now probably. I've got a, now that's going to make notes harder. You should probably question yourself before you listen. <laughs> Um, all right, so here we go. Here's the word of the day. As other guy already referenced, well, for hey, no, we'll do the word of the day, and then I'll and then I'll say my piece. So the word of the day. What we're doing is we're bringing back 1920 slang. This is a word or phrase that was popular at the time. It's lost its uh, cultural validity over the decades. We're trying to bring it back. Uh, this week's word of the day. Giving it a big dose of Viagra. Indeed. Yeah. yeah a big word hard on. That's what we're looking for. Uh, this week's word of the day, Oliver Twist. God, I, I don't like these two and four. I don't like uh, – this is this is why these were these are why these phrases died. Out. Hey, I used some of the best ones first. I don't know if, the, if you if you picked up on that. Oh, I did. You should probably plan it out better next time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oliver Twist. What do you think it means? Uh, a gimpy little kid. Yeah, the opposite of that, sir. Like like the Montezuma's revenge of what you said. It's an extremely good dancer. If you're a really good dancer, you know how to cut a rug. You're an Oliver Twist. That fella's a regular Oliver Twist. I tell you. Does he have two left feet? No, sir. He's an Oliver Twist. No? No, sir. No, sir. I don't like it. What? I Well, I dis- Well, then I'll probably get to use it first. Nope. <laughs> I will hate use it. I will hate abate it. You hate abate it? Yep. Don't hate abate it. I don't feel like that's something that we can uh, say on the radio. Um, so I want to I want to address something. This hasn't been on purpose exactly. You know what hater baiting is, don't you? I don't. It's like whenever you're. It's, whenever, no, it's like whenever it's like a snake mentality. No, it's like whenever your significant other has pissed you off. Oh, <laughs> so you're not gonna have then, sex. You're not no, gonna go for sex. No, no, no. So like you just fucking beat it real quick <laughs> and finish. So you got yours, and then you just roll over and go to bed. You hater baited. I'll admit I've hater baited a few times. It's a good word, huh? <laughs> hey, no, it's a great word. That's that's uh, it's 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 definitely got the uh, one guy stamp of of approval. Uh, it wasn't on purpose, but over the past several episodes, two guys one podcast. I don't know if you've noticed, it's a little shorter than we had been for a while. We'd we'd been running right at an hour or over an hour. Past few episodes, we've been hovering closer to forty minutes. It wasn't exactly on purpose. But I got to tell you, I think it's going to be the new way of things. I think we're going to go closer to 30 to 45 minutes than an hour. Well, I enjoy shows that are between that I enjoy shows that are right around 45. Well, I you know, we do another show now for one thing. Yeah. And it's an extra 25 minutes or so of content every week that we got to produce. But then it's also the like everything that goes on the not just the recording but the actual editing and the putting together and the the production and stuff. But the other thing is also like We've been doing this a while. We've settled into a format. We kind of know what works. And I feel like in past times, those hour-long episodes, if I'd spent enough time on the cutting room, and you had told me this before, you should you should have cut these tighter. You should have cut you could have cut all of that out, whatever. If I'd done that, we might have had like 40-minute episodes anyway. Right. So 
just for the listeners, so you know what to expect, I think that's going to be sort of our target, at least for the foreseeable future. And what that's going to allow you to do is have new episodes, as opposed to us like shutting down and going into seasons or something. So your your reason for that is you think that's just the natural way things are, and my reason for it is I hate the listeners. <laughs> so I want to give them less content. Uh uh, well, you could at least have, have framed that in the, hey, you got to keep them coming back for more. You got to leave them wanting more. You're nope. like, no, fuck them. Fuck your <laughs> fuck, mother. Fuck them and feed them fish heads. All right, then. Uh, so let's go to, um, let's talk about the Beatles' revenge. Speaking of fuck, fuck them and feed them fish heads. Okay, I'm going to assume this is not the band. Uh, it, it, it's a play on words. It is, it is both about the band and about the bug. So what you're saying is it's going to be something that pisses me off. Maybe. You don't like the Beatles? The no, band? I don't like when you think you're clever. Oh. Mm. Well, this isn't me being clever. This is spin.com spin. being clever. Before we get into this. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Earlier you liked my cleverness, my multi-alliteration. Can I, can I? Right, but you didn't know you were being clever. I had to point it out. Ah, oh, damn it. It's when you think you're being clever. <laughs> you, for whatever reason... Feel the need to make my life technologically better. Uh, I, I do. As if I'm not a grown ass man who consciously cuts technology out of my life to make it simpler and easier to live in. Yes. Not only. Do you make suggestions on what you think that I should do? You talk out of your ass so much. Uh, uh, I mean, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you own a droid device? I do not. Have you ever owned a droid device? I have not. Do I own a droid device? Many, many of them. How much do you know about podcast apps on droid devices i know fucking nothing that's know, the answer i know nothing. three i know the nothing. names i know the names of three apps that were listed in that article that i googled and sent to you the other day <laughs> yes that's what i know for months for months you have been hounding me to try other podcast apps and you often tell me it's better because it's easier and you can do this and you can do that. But it's not easier. It's more complicated. There is nothing easier than just pressing play, which is all I currently have to do. But here's here's the – there's nothing wrong. You currently use Stitcher. Yes. There's nothing wrong with Stitcher. According to not you. Well, no. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with Have you with ever Stitcher. used Stitcher? Yeah, I've used it a little bit. I used it when I first, not when I first started listening to podcasts. When I first started listening to podcasts, I'd sync through iTunes. I've always had an iPhone since I've listened to podcasts. So I would, I would sync to, or, or well, since I've had an iPhone, that's the way that I've listened to podcasts. Uh, and before that, I didn't have a phone you could listen to anything on. So I would sync through iTunes and I would listen that way. As soon as the third-party app store became prevalent and there were other podcast apps, I started downloading podcast apps. Stitcher's one of the ones I tried. My problem with Stitcher is this. First of all, they change the audio. They resample the audio. So the show sounds different. Okay, how long ago was it when you listened to Stitcher? When was the last time you listened to a Stitcher podcast? Uh, I listened to one of our podcasts on Stitcher when when Pod on Pod launched. When Pod on, so like two months. Okay, two months Three ago. Three months, maybe. Three months ago, and you listened to... The whole episode, half episode, yeah, one episode? Yeah, about a half episode, probably. Okay. Before that, when was the last time you listened? Probably six months or a year before that. Okay. Your opinion means fucking <laughs> nothing. <laughs> okay. I Do you know anybody else? Do you know anybody else but me that listens to as many podcasts as you do? No, but we do it because we have a show where we have to listen to podcasts. You're right. But I'm, one of the things that we do is we go back and listen to old episodes. Stitcher makes that difficult as well. It makes it more difficult How than other How does it make difference? You hit episodes, and then you go to load episodes. Yes, but they, it, they won't load the whole feed. So if you have a show that has hundreds of episodes, you won't get them all. Our show, this show, Two Guys, One Podcast, doesn't. They all of the episodes don't show up in Stitcher. You can't listen to number one. I, I've recently because I don't go. Here's the thing: is you, well, I you don't couldn't. Go, I don't go back and listen right to episodes right until Harmontown. I enjoy it on Stitcher. 
I've gone back to episode one and I've listened all the way through episode six so far. Okay, and how many? But how many total episodes are there? There's like forty, right? No, there's like a hundred and eleven. All right, then fine. Maybe they've changed some of their limits. All right, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm, I'm just going to keep giving you emails and keep sending you fucking text messages at fucking 1 a.m. just because I think you should do something I want you to do. <sighs> you don't have to respond to a text message just because I send it. I have a do not disturb on my phone, and so I don't see your text messages at 1 a.m. unless I'm currently playing on my phone. Here's here's my thing. Like, Did you try one of the other apps? Yeah. I'm Isn't up- the audio different? Isn't the audio different? Isn't it better? Not enough for me to tell a difference. Really? Really? Oh, that's so I cannot imagine. Like I don't I don't know. You have like a $200 Bluetooth speaker that you listen to things on. And sometimes the equivalent of what Stitcher does to the audio is like running it through a cop megaphone. It's like I hear everything clearly. Oh, it's ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, all right. You see, even just now, the last time you listened to it was two months ago for half an episode and a year before that. <laughs> you don't know. All right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's talk about something I do know about. All right. The Beatles. Beatles. I know a lot about the Beatles. There's a tree that was planted to honor the memory of the Beatles songwriter George Harrison. The Beatles songwriter wasn't just a songwriter. He was... Uh, their uh, their guitar player, George Harrison. He of the Beatles. The tree has now been killed by Beatles. Right on. The Los Angeles Times reports, uh, the living local monument fell victim to an infestation of insects that couldn't be bested. According to Councilman Tom LaBonge. Oh, man, you know what I would fucking <laughs> love what happened? What if band pe- members of bands were killed by their namesake. That's exactly my thought. Like, so, the, if the monkeys were, uh, Davy Jones is hanging out at the zoo, yes. and he's just attacked by a wild yes. chimpanzee. Our he's twisted beating the sister. Shit out of. <laughs> he just gets a fucking. <laughs> it's, it turns out his sister was a loose cannon. She shoots yes. him in the face. Yes. <laughs> D. Snyder, they're coming for you. Watch Cars. out. Uh, <laughs> the um, Beach Boys. Mamas and the Pop. Mamas and the Papas. Uh, well, Mama Cass was, was choked on the sandwich, right? Didn't she die on a ham sandwich or some shit like yeah. that? Maybe maybe there's foul play there. Maybe we just didn't know about it. Maybe one of the papas choked her. Maybe it was yeah. his ham sandwich. It's dirty. Um, so I'm wondering, do you think that Yoko, you think Yoko released the Beatles onto the tree? Like this one last, like, fuck you, Joe George. Roll damn tide. Roll damn tide. Uh, what's his face got uh, uh, turned around? They let him out of prison, and he forgot his geography. Yeah, um, the tree was. <clears throat> let's see, the tree was planted in L.A. Uh, he died there at 58 in 2001. He was cremated at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. The so-called George Harrison tree was accompanied by a plaque reading in memory of a great humanitarian. Well, I was hoping it'd be accompanied by a bass player and a drummer. <laughs> In memory of a great humanitarian who touched the world as an artist, a musician, and a gardener. And it included this quote from the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. For the forest to be green, each tree must be green. Namaste. (laughs) The forest ain't green anymore, folks. Um, What do you think the... uh, What would be the worst band way to die? Like bands dying because of their, their so like Rolling Stones uh, getting crushed by boulders, <laughs> by boulders, yeah, falling rocks. You're driving around those steep uh, cliffs in uh, California that you see all the time, and there's uh, an avalanche. Um, I had one in mind before I came on the show, and I kind of forgot about it. I'm glad that you got there before I did, though. I'm glad you were on the same path. Yeah, I. Uh... Boys to Man would be terrible. <laughs> oh, it's like a bunch oh. of fucking like sixteen tweeners. <laughs> it's like a, a drive-by shooting gone wrong, a gang initiation gone wrong. Yeah, they're breaking into Grandpa's house to uh, <laughs> to steal the uh, meds. Or Chubby Checker, just a huge fucking checker falls on you. Uh, what about um? What about Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young? No, Modest Mouse would be a terrible way to go. <laughs> like he's eaten by a shrew. 
he just like fucking decimates you and you look at him he's just got this little smirk like eh. <laughs> what, what am i gonna do i was locked in this box yeah. with anything else to eat i'm i'm just a mouse <laughs> i can't control my animal urges I'm sorry. <laughs> no upper brain <laughs> Um, all right, let's let's move to a a whole different uh, kind of of beast. Uh, I said this is the battle of the bears. Fun, fun would be a great way to go. <laughs> How do you die? Too much fucking fun. James, James, and George are both dead at the age of fifty five. That's what Belushi died from. <laughs> he died from. You might say Mama Cass died from too much fun too. That ham sandwich was delightful. <laughs> All right, here's the headline. This is from USA Today, uh, their sports section. And, and what's funny is if you die from fun, the odds are is you're young. Uh, I suppose that's true, yeah. Um, I, feel like there's a, I feel like there's a big one we're leaving out. Can if you imagine got- if, you could die, if you could die from fun? Fucking Disney World and Six Flags out of business in a week. <laughs> uh, Led Zeppelin dies pretty much the same way that Led Skinner, Leonard Skinner actually died. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's go on. Let's move to the uh, the next story here. This is the USA Today sports section. And this is going to affect you. This is the reason why I wanted to bring up this story. I don't have anything funny to say about this necessarily. I just, I just want to know what you think about it. Chicago Cubs are suing the people behind unofficial team mascot Billy Cub. Okay. If you've been to a Cubs game in Chicago in the last seven years, there's a chance you may have run into Billy Cub. Have you you've been to Wrigley Field, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. Have you seen Billy Cub? You got your picture taken with him? No. You know, but you know what we're talking yeah. about. Okay. The unofficial Cubs mascot who takes photos with fans outside Wrigley. Cubs introduced an official mascot, yep. Clark the Cub, at the beginning of this season and have been trying to eradicate Billy the Cub for years. Last year, the uh, the Cubs sent John Paul Wire, one of the men behind Billy Club, uh, Billy Cub. And uh, I keep wanting to say Billy Club. I, I yeah, I know. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, they sent him a letter, a hundred page letter, urging him Cease to and desist. Yeah, to stop engaging in unabated mascot activities. That's the phrasing that I like so much. Wire and other men that dress as Billy did not stop their mascot activities. And continue to be a staple at Cubs games. In April, Billy Cub got in a fight at a Wrigleyville bar, which was caught on video. And I'm looking at a gif of this guy walks up behind him, takes off the head, and he just walks over to the guy's like, give me back that head, and just smacks sp- him, fucking mm-hmm. punches him right in the yep. face. The Cubs have now filed a lawsuit against Ware and uh, four other men, accusing them of engaging in unsavory actions. Not just mascot actions, but unsavory mascot actions, according to the Chicago Suns Times. Uh, Sun Times. Billy Cub asked for tips from fans, though Wire has said in the past that the money goes to maintaining the suit and that he sees no monetary gain. Uh, the seven count suit charges the Wires with trademark infringement, deceptive trade practices, injury to the Cubs' reputation, and unfair competition. The suit is asking the court to order the Wares to stop using the Billy Cub character and deliver for destruction. All merchandise, advertisements, packaging, costumes, and other materials related to the character. Um, what do you think about this? Is the club out of there? Is the you know is the uh, the ball club out of their depths? Telling this guy to take a hike. Um, I think it's going to be another curse of the goat situation. Like they're going to flush him out, and but then they're then not going to win for another fucking hundred years. <laughs> so so if you own the Cubs, you just let this shit ride. You're like, look. Yeah, Still you, trouble the you, waters. What are you out of? <laughs> Fucking maybe, let's say, the high end 12 grand a year. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, I don't know how hard it is. The Cubs are the, well, no, the White Sox are the second team in Chicago, right? Like, I mean, yeah. the Cubs still have the traditional. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I can't imagine it's a hard sell getting people. Like, people aren't turning away from your games because they saw the video on YouTube of the off-brand mascot smacking the guy at the bar, no, right? No, also, well, Wrigley is one of the smallest uh, stadiums in the in the leagues, man. So what is that? Are you saying there's uh, this, this stadium isn't big enough for the two of us? Well, <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is they're they're always gonna sit. They're always gonna sell out. Oh, okay. So you, yeah. So ticket ticket sales aren't an issue. I guess ticket sales aren't the only thing that you're worried about as a franchise owner. But like they even have for Wrigleyville, like they they have um, 
the restaurants uh, behind the bleachers uh, have put stadium seating on their roofs. They have for years. So people can go to those bars, pay the pay the bar to get the seating at top, sit up top, eat and drink, and watch see the it. game too. And it's and it's not bad. It's not a bad view at all. Right. But what the Cubs have done is, if they don't get a cut from those bars, if they don't get a certain percentage, they're just going to put up billboards, <laughs> and, they'll, and they'll block the views. Um, and do you have a problem with that? Not at all. No, I agree. I guess getting a cut, as long as you give them an option. Like, okay, this business practice has existed in the past, and I understand that you now are counting on it, and that's fine, but you got to understand, I should have been getting a cut all along. Well, I think what, that- what, what should have happened is, whenever they introduced Clark, they should have just got the guys who are already doing Billy to take over Clark and pay him. Right, adopt. I mean, they've been doing it. They've been doing it for years. Uh, yeah. Why? So why not bring them in house? Right. Do you do you know if there were like did they even reach out to them? Oh, I Was doubt that it. attempted? I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah. I, here's my thing. Like I, I kind of understand why they don't want a competing mascot, uh, especially since he uses. Well, I mean, he uses the logo on the helmet that he wears. Like it's the, you know, it says Chicago on his jersey and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like he looks like he's an official guy. If I'm just a Chicago tourist, if I'm just coming from, you know, if I'm coming from northern Louisiana for my first time in Chicago and I haven't read this article, then I don't know which one's the official one and which one's not the official one. You're probably. And I guess, I mean, if he's I don't know, if there was a lot of like fan complaints or something, I could I could understand them shutting them down. The thing that I have a problem with is them asking for them to get all of them like, hey, you deliver the suit, you deliver the all merchandise, anything you got with that image on it, all you the photos that you have, et cetera, et cetera. You gotta deliver all that shit because we're gonna burn it. We're gonna destroy it all. That's like nonsense. These guys that's part of their retirement package at this point. You box that shit up and in ten years you can sell it to some Big Cubs fan as as all like well, high price memorabilia. What, what, what here's 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 what they should do, dude. You could make this into a media stunt easy. Um, you know, like in uh, in Milwaukee, they have the sausage races, right? So for the whole, I did not know. <laughs> well, for the whole season, <laughs> how do you race sausages? <laughs> if you're in a giant sausage suit, man. oh man, and like okay. the bratwurst is dressed up like a German. I've and got to got, Google you sausage got the tr- races. The Cherise, you've never seen the sausage races? No, I've never seen the sausage races. Holy yeah. shit, you are not kidding. It's just images of people like there's a hot dog. It's all kind of, dude, it's it, it's it's fucking hilarious if you're watching the players start fucking with them. Uh one of the hot dogs, one of the sausages lost cuz a player hopped out and hit him with a bat. This is awesome. This is brilliant. Um but what you do is you get the you get Billy and you get Clark and you let them have like a little wrestling match every home game and to and see. the and whoever wins the most matches gets to be the mascot. <laughs> Obviously, you set it up to where Clark wins. It's the, it's but the, as uh, big as WWE is, as big as wrestling is, man, that's a draw. It's, it's going to get on Sports Center fucking twice a week. It's the it's the Cumber Games. The Cumber Cumber. I'm trying to put Hunger Games and Cubs together, Why? but it's not. I don't know. Why? How to, for the young people, man. You got to pull in the kids. You know, for the kids. Uh Google sausage races, ladies and gentlemen. If you um, if you've never seen this, matter of fact, one of these images is probably going to be our <laughs> the image on the front page of our website this next week. That's fantastic. All right, uh, that's sausage races, and that is uh, the Battle of the Bears. I want to talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about, about you and me. No, 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 no. Other people. Let's talk about other people through time. Uh, here's from middlefloss.com. 31 adorable slang terms for sexual intercourse from the last 600 years. Who wants to have adorable sex? Uh, <laughs> well, the sex isn't adorable. These are, in retrospect, a little adorable. Some of them are. Uh, I it, want my sex to be nasty and sticky and horrible. If you uh, if you were going to make it with a lady around 1351, the, the 14th century, you would uh, suggest that you might want to give her a green gown. How does that work? I don't know. Uh, I like 1505 better. Uh, then you'd play Nugga Nug. <laughs> I don't like that let's either. Go, let's go to the back, you and me, and play a little Nugga Nug. I mean, that, that seems <laughs> that Nugga Nug seems more like, like 1200 B.C. Uh, 
1521, you would play at couch quail. <laughs> I can still. That's. I think that works today. Um, in 1611, it was referred to as fadoodling. I like fadoodling. You know, you, you know what's gotten me my, mo- my most of my fadoodling. What's that? My Oliver Twistness. <laughs> Damn it! Cutting a rug with the lady That's right. in the kitchen. And she's like, you know what I'm in the mood to do? For doodle. I want you to put the devil into hell. Was that really one of them? <laughs> yes, that's from 1616. Oh, that's that's terrible. I would not, it would totally break the mood if Honey Bun grabs me and says, why don't you just put the devil into hell? Well, it's No, what it is is, you're, like you're all horny, right? Right. Uh, to not be horny means the devil has gone back to hell. Like he's no longer in possession of you. He's not giving you these carnal urges. You uh, must be exercised by the vagina. Exercise that vagina. Um, <laughs> how about how about in uh, 1621? Also, it, you'd take a night physic, little night physic. A what spell? What's the last spell? The last P H Y S I C. Oh, so it's like just like like a physical, but at night. Yes, little night exercise. Um, or in 1578, you, you could, couldn't have day sex. They're too pasty. That's, true, that's right. You could ride below the crupper. I don't <laughs> want to do anything anywhere near a crumper. How about board a land karak? Spell the last Board okay. a land okay. C-A-R-R-A-C-K. Karak. I don't know what a, I don't I don't know know what what a water crack is. What is a land? Oh, it's board. It's like a boat. It's a kind of a boat. The karak is a ship. So I'm boarding the land boat. I can see that. Uh, in 1630, you could call it Prince and Pransom. I would not <laughs> call anything Prince and Pransom. That's adorable, though. You have to admit. Um, this one is very accurate. In 1656, they would describe it as joining paunches. <laughs> Uh, the missus and I were joining punches last night. It wouldn't. It wouldn't work uh, for me and Mrs. Other guy. She has no punch. Uh, in 1656, I wasn't implying, by the way, that Honey Bun has a punch. 1656. Oh yes, you were. No, no, no. Oh yeah. 1656. You could dance the Paphian jig. I don't like that one. P a p h. She was pretty hot and tempted. P a p h. Paphian. Ah, Paphian Grove. That's like Pan. It's, oh, uh, Pan, the, the god, the Greek god, who, who yeah, was Dionysus the, before there was Dionysus. Uh, the Latin is Paphius, Greek Paphios, or Paphos, ancient city of Cyprus that was the center of worship of Aphrodite. Ah. Yeah. I like that one. Dance the Paphian jig. Hmm. Uh, from 1660, play at Tre Tripodi. I don't like that one. Play at Tre Tripodi? What the fuck is that? Uh, the dance Barnaby. That's from 1664. No, sir. Shot twixt wind and water, 1665. Shot twixt wind and water. It's a shot twixt wind and water. Let's see if that has any origin. Shot twix, twixt wind and water. Huh. Uh, I can't. Google's not making sense here. Uh, from 1674, you could blow off the ground sills. I'm giving you two more, and then this segment's over. <laughs> You're calling it out, huh? All right. Make feet for children's stockings. From 1785. Well, that's, I mean, that's like trying to make a baby. That's not just fucking. <laughs> How about Pogue the Hone? <laughs> I do like Pogue the Hone. That one I'm probably going to use. P O G U E, the H O N E. Pogue the Hone. That's a. Uh, Before you poke the hone, you have to hone the pogue. Oh, it's. Uh, it comes from. It comes from the Gaelic. It's a bastardization of Gaelic. The phrase in Gaelic is Pogue Mahone. Or Paga Mahone, and that uh, meant uh, kiss my ass, effectively. So, so Pogue the Hone, 
uh, w- like an anglicized, an anglicized version butt of that. Sex? Yeah, it's probably probably doing butt stuff. Um, how about play? Last play. How about play? Hey, gammer cook. Nope. See, that was three, and I'm not listening, so I don't even know what you just said. Oh, come on. Nope. Uh, <laughs> all right. Here's the best one. No. See, you had an opportunity to say the best one the previous fucking twelve. All right. Fine. Then here is one that that you don't have to listen to, but it's a very good one. You do this every time. From 1896, arrive at the end of a sentimental journey. That's what I say to you. Well, since you've decided to take the rest of the podcast off. No, you don't know when to... Anytime you read a list. I don't know when to call it a... No, at fucking all. All right, then. I'm, hey, I got time to fill over here. I don't know what's funny until I edit it later. Like I can always cut some out. But if you not never good. do. That's not true. That's very true. You don't know what I cut. I cut a lot. How many podcasts you've edited in the last six months? None. But I've listened to the last four of ours. <laughs> you don't remember when we walk out of the studio what we say though. It's all new to you. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> oh, Pogue Mahone. <laughs> you want to do a little word for Bob Ross? Yeah. All right, then. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go and get your Zen moment every week at bobrossquotes.com. That's where we get this stuff from. Uh, but uh, he is our guru of the canvas, Mr. Bob Ross. This week, the word from Bob Ross is the trees are oh so soft. Oh, so soft. I freaking love it. Is, is freaking love it really in there? Yes. Is it really? Yes. The trees are oh, so soft. Oh, so soft. I freaking love it. Oh, man. I love Bob. That's a guy That's a guy with passions, man. What? Have you ever... When's the last time you climbed a tree? It's been a long time since I climbed a tree. Really? Yeah. Uh, I probably kind of... Within the last six months. Really? Yeah. I haven't climbed a tree in 15 years, probably. Maybe more than that. Like, it was, I was a young teenager the last time that I was in a tree, as it were. But I've never sat in one that I would describe as soft. The trees are only soft on the campus. Oh, man, let me tell you. No, no, no. no. Out, <laughs> so, at, uh, at my hometown public library, right? All right. There were... That's these, not a real tree. <laughs> no, there were these massive... Fucking huge magnolia trees. Okay. I would go and check out a book and then climb up in this tree. I mean, the br- the branches were, I mean, you, you could probably lay side by side with somebody. Oh, wow. And they and they gently bent. It was it was amazing. I, I would climb up that tree fucking every day and read. Uh, yeah, no, I've never been exposed to such a tree. So I didn't, like... I'm trying to think. Have you ever have you ever been inside in like a tree of, that's big enough? Yeah. Have no. you ever been inside one of the giant magnolias? No, I don't. It's guess like I a have. whole little world in there. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Maybe I just always climb the wrong trees. Maybe I need to find myself a good tree to get up in. All right. I'm gonna go poke my home. Find myself a tree. Uh, until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm disgruntled. (laughs) And this has been the podcast, the Pogcast.
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh wait a minute. I just searched for Pogue Mahone. There is a Pogue Mahone pickles. Your pickle matters. Made in Austin. Nationwide pickle de- pickle delivery is back on for the holidays at Pogue Mahone Pickles. Kiss my ass pickles. Kiss my ass pickles. Apparently, you can buy them in uh, Whole Foods Market as well. Currently in stock downtown and Arbor Trails. Uh, I like pickles. I I do not like pickles, but I think that's interesting. I may order some. The company is owned by a young man named Sam Addison. He is 29 years old and a recent graduate of La Cordon Bleu Culinary Academy in Austin, Texas. Food and cooking are my life, and these pickles are my proudest creation. I've been working on these recipes for over 10 years now, tweaking and adjusting even the smallest details, much like a very mad scientist. This is the first time that they've ever been available to the public, and I'm very excited to share them with you. A wonderful Irishman once told me, these are the best damn pickles in the world. Anyone who disagrees can pogue Mahone. Can kiss my ass. Kiss my ass, pickles. Your pickle matters. Very interesting. That's some free advertisement there for for old Pogue Mahone. 